Hey everyone, and welcome back to part 22 of Let's Clone a Pokemon Game. So, last time I was talking about the different attacks for each monster, and I was saying how we should probably put that all into one script. Well, I found a very easy way to do that and to set this up with just simple switch statements and different functions and being able to transfer and call different functions from different scripts to get it to work properly. And I actually was able to make this pretty easily so I'll just go over exactly what I did to get this working and you guys can add this in. Now before we get started I want to scroll down here to your monster equipped. Now you want these to be changed to different attacks so whichever different attacks that you want um, just set them up through here. Just uh, make sure that your naming conventions that it's going to be exactly the same of how you named it. So if you use capital letters, you, you're going to want to use capital letters um, in what we're doing. So just make sure that's all set up. Just make sure each one of these is a different attack, and we can easily test this. We won't, won't worry about the type for right now or anything like that, so we'll just worry about that later. We might actually change that up completely and just put that all in the uh, each function. Okay, and from there you want to create a brand new script called monster attacks and this is where we'll, be, where we'll be storing each of the monsters attacks and abilities and whatnot and so we'll just jump into here um, we're gonna go back into our main and we actually want to set up something to access this monster attack script so where I threw that was just onto my player so monster attacks you can throw it onto anywhere um, just make sure you're referencing it correctly through here so in order to access other scripts, you need to first just create a generic uh, name for the script. Do not name it exactly how it is here. So this one's lowercase m, this is uppercase m, and you want this name to be the actual name of the script that we want to access, so monster attacks. And then we actually want to find where that script is located. So we're going to be grabbing monster attacks here just our variable game object find player so this script is placed on our player get component monster attack so we want to find our player and then grab the script from there throw it in the variable so we can access it and that's how we're going to be calling stuff from this script and then you're going to want to go back down into your turns now what we're going to be doing is doing monster attacks so it's accessing that variable which is accessing this script dot usability and you're probably wondering what usability is or what it has to do with monster attacks well since it's accessing this script we can actually call different functions from other scripts and so usability is a function within the monster attacks and here is where we can put different inputs now you can put a you know comma and then put something else just make sure so this is pretty much like creating a variable that we can um, send back and forth with which without actually creating it as a variable so pretty much in the very first spot is going to be that first plugged in thing so we use ability and we call this line of code here it's going to plug it into here and then we can use attack name and we can plug it in here and use use that variable it's just an easy way to throw around variables if you're using um, kinda complex things now like I said before um, you could put a comma here and you could do something else you know if you really wanted to saying like if it was a grass attack and you could put a comma here and do grass attack and add another string and then use that variable as well so I could go into that later if anyone has any questions about that um, you can just ask me in the comments it can get a little confusing so pretty much what we're doing is since this is always going through a loop and displaying everything that's in here it's going to be sending over which monster attack we use so that's why I said the naming convention is so important so for each attack that we named it's going to be displayed on the button as well as if we click the button it's going to send that variable of which attack we clicked over so from here it's going to call usability send the attack name that we're using put it into a switch statement and if you guys don't know what a switch statement is it's pretty much um, 
like a list. It'll go through the list, and once it finds something that matches, it's just going to end out of here. It's just going to break. It's not going to call anything else on here. And so in here, you want listed each one of your different attacks. I'm just using two for now just to show you guys how it works. And then if that attack name was vine or was smash, we want to call vine or smash function, which these are going to be our attacks, so I should probably label that. So these are all the different attacks that you can use, you know, and we're just going to call it debug for now. So each one of these is going to do something cool, play a certain animation, deal a certain amount of damage, apply poison, different stuff like that. We'll get more into that in the future. But this is our basic attack script, and it's very easy to set up and use. And you can add this to a variety of different games, but this is just what we're using it for. So I'm going to jump into gameplay and actually show you guys how this works. So we'll put our console here. And we're going to go run through the grass again. And in here we can see all our different abilities listed for our equipped monster. Now when we click Vine, you can see here um, we use our Vine attack, attacked with Vine. Actually, hold on. Oh yeah, see here. It also lists it in our debug, so we could actually completely get rid of that if we wanted to. We'll just leave it in there for now, but that's why it displays twice. So use vine attacked, attacked with vine, player attacked, enemy attacked. Exactly what we want. Okay, so we clicked vine and we used our vine attack, but what if we wanted to use smash? We can click smash. Use smash attack, attack with smash, player attacked, enemy attacked. So we're getting our two different attacks here. We're getting our vine attack and our smash attack depending on which button we clicked on. Now if we click on a button that's not assigned, such as tackle, it's going to just display as none because we set it as none. So if none in these cases, if it's not a smash, if it's not a vine, if it's something different that we don't know of, it's just going to default to none. So that's why it's very important to add in every single one of your cases, set up your different functions for each one of your attacks and set that up that way. So, after you guys get that set up, hopefully we can get into some more advanced calculating of numbers, maybe, and uh, get some attack damage going and get in and out of combat. That's probably what I'm going to be covering in the next bit of tutorials. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and hopefully I'll start coming out with some more tutorials very soon here.